You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Will Durun from Boston, Massachusetts. Their album Veil of Imagination has been doing very well for them as they've just been signed to Century Media Records. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for taking time to talk to me. Hey, thanks Thank so you. much, there. Thank you very yeah, much. Man, thanks for having us. I'm Thank really ex- I've never done this. I've got five people talking to me, so we'll just try to make sure that we don't try to not talk over each other. But we should all know what you guys' voices sound like and who's who. So if we can, just try to find an order, introduce your, your say your name and what you play in the band. We should just gang vocal every answer. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess I'll start. My name is Evan, and I sing and play guitar. My name is Dan, I play bass, and I do orchestrations. My name is Joe, I play lead guitar. I'm John, I play drums. I'm Wayne, I do uh, orchestrations and uh, occasionally substitute for bass live and play guitar live and play folk instruments and just whatever else additional crap needs to be done. (laughs) Awesome. So, uh... How did the band really begin? Since I got five of you here, it should be a, a contiguous story between the five of you. Now I shouldn't hear five different stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I on my end, uh, uh, I kind of had the the a very rough idea of the band since like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, but it was just it wasn't really anything concrete for about three or four years, um, and but then I. Um, I think it all kind of kicked off when I, in 2011, when I had a bunch of material and I finally just really decided I just wanted to make a, we just wanted to make a record and I needed to get a group together. Um, I had been good friends with John for at least a couple of years. We played in a different band and I kind of knew for a while he was going to be the drummer. But um, once I got in touch with Wayne um, and cause I knew he did the film scoring stuff and all that, that's when I, the real album formation sort of came together. It was in early, uh, late 2011. So basically the band really started with the first record. We didn't really, we played a couple shows, but really the first thing we did was just get together and make, just we wanted to make the record. And we didn't really look beyond that. We just said, we got these songs. Um, and then uh, both John and Wayne knew Dan. So they, uh, brought Dan, I hadn't met Dan before, so they brought Dan to the picture to play bass. Um, and then we made the record in early 2012, and that was kind of the beginning. And then, and then we just kind of from there, we just kind of just let it, you know, let it get out there and just see what people thought. And people seemed to like it, so we thought, okay, I guess we could try to continue this and see if it gains momentum. And in, uh, and well, Joe can tell his entrance story because uh, he came into the picture a bit later. But that's that's my recollection on my end. It's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, if I recall correctly, there was never any any intention of continuing as a band. We just wanted to record an album, right? Yeah, it was it was it was vague. It was it was a vague sort of non concrete thing. It's like we just wanted it, we just focused on the album, and then we said we'll think about everything else later. But we just won't really. It was no, there's definitely no concrete plan. Yeah, and then I guess I came into the picture after, um, just like the band needed a, a fill in guy because Wayne had some other stuff going on for a little while. And, um, at that time, like I, I think I can't remember if we started doing shows or started doing recordings first. Um, but after, after a while of, of being the filling guy, then it, eventually I switched over to being in the band. Well, you're, I, I, I'm pretty sure your first contribution was the lead guitar parts on Sleep at the Edge of the Earth. And okay, then, uh, that makes sense. And then, but I, I, I forget if you were even, if it, I don't even think you were in a, a quote, an official member at that point, but you were, you did that and then you played some shows and then it was like, yeah, and then Wayne was still unable to play live. So we made the, we just made the addition officially. Yeah, if I if I remember, what I remember is um, um, it was it was uh, I think it was definitely Joe that you came in to like record guitar on sleep because the the big reason that that I had to step aside for a while was due to my my you know my music job and 
And so the big deal was like, how are we going to tour for the new record if, you know, if Wayne can't go play guitar? So, um, you know, you were, you were filling in for guitar on the record. Then it was like, Joe's already over in Massachusetts. So you should just use Joe and go do the shows, you know, it makes it so much easier for, for everybody. And then I, I, uh, had to step aside from the band for a little while. Uh, and luckily Joe was there to shred it up. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, that uh, about right. Yeah, that's awesome. So you all agree that's that's the history of the band, right? Can, can confirm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know this was a no, test. No, I'm, just, I'm just joking around. <laughs> was uh, there? So, <laughs> what are some of the influences that you guys all have? Definitely not Opeth. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it's funny because I, I, like, from everything I keep reading online, people are like, yeah compare you guys to opeth and that's kind of it kind of bugs me because i saw the same thing happen with ancients when they showed up oh and yeah i think what it is i think what it is is there's just a void out there for old school opeth fans and whenever they hear something that sounds even slightly close to it they all share it with each other go dude it was like opeth <laughs> you know yeah. they're just starving <laughs> for something right now it's definitely something nice. along those lines i mean i think yeah. um well i i talked a lot so someone else can Hey Dan, you haven't talked yet. What's up, Dan? Fuck Dan. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I think I mean the Opeth comparisons are definitely valid because I mean a lot of us are big Opeth fans, and we, you know, I mean, I personally like Martin Mendes is a big influence on my bass playing. Um, so I mean, it, it, there's only so much we can do to, to separate that from ourselves because it is ingrained in us. But there's also, I think, a lot of other aspects of our sound. Um, that all put together makes Wilder Run sound what it is. Like for instance, you've got all the the orchestral elements, which come from um, you know both Wayne and I have uh, done a lot of film and video game kind of work in the past. So you know for me, a lot of that influence comes from um, like Jeremy Soule, Howard Shore, but then also like especially Philip Glass, um, Giannis Sinakis, and see these kind of like contemporary classical composers kind of bringing in kind of a different aspect of symphonic music to metal and not just the the, the typical kind of romantic era and classical era uh, composers that you usually hear i think i think another important thing to to piggyback on what dan just said is also to to keep in mind that just as individuals too all of us come from varying musical backgrounds, which is another thing I think helps Wilder Run have kind of a unique sound. Uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, a lot of us also listen to a lot of like um, Americana, you know, folk type music and, and even just our influences as musicians, like me personally, I, you know, I grew up listening to a lot of progressive rock and progressive metal. And I have influences like Joe Satriani and John Petrucci and, you know, and Joe's got like the wicked awesome like eighties you know hair metal you know old school metal thing going on, and so you mash up all of those influences. Um, you know, it's not like we all hung out in high school and listened to <laughs> one Opeth record and then went, let's do that, but, but with slide guitar, you know, like. <laughs> like <laughs> I think that's important uh, for our sound to to not be totally just a copy, you know. What? Uh one another thing that I find interesting is there's that folk metal uh, sound that you know we we did on our first album, and if I find it very interesting that we had that sound uh, when three of us uh, at one time or another our favorite band was Dream Theater, and that never gets dropped in any of the, the you know Wilder Run sounds like this band or that band, um, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that somehow like didn't seep into the into the sound really. Yeah, that's a really good point. Even Dan had the John Myung bass on the first record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> so uh, I I've, I know you guys kind of have an interesting writing process. Uh, can we go into that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, it, I guess I'll start because the writing process at least thus far, has mostly started on my end. Um, uh, 
uh, uh, basically the, the, the general, the overall way that the whole process has worked is that I'm, I've been the songwriter, but you know, so much of Wilder Run is, is more than just basic songwriting. It's so much more about the arrangements and the, the instrumentation and the, and the, just the execution of all those instruments. So it's been kind of like, I, I, I've been the core songwriter of the band um, and I'll, I'll kind of, you know, I, I, but I don't have much in the way of like production ability and, and my, I have kind of basic arranging skills as far as using different instruments and orchestrations, but nothing to the level of um, the other guys in the band. So um, it's been kind of a nice process where I can kind of focus just on basic core songwriting, just the, the chords and the melodies and the, the structure and the flow of the song. And then, um, you know, then I'll kind of give a rough demo uh, kind of structure skeleton to the rest of the guys. And, um, you know, everyone will then contribute instrumentally, you know, because everyone, everyone can do more with their instruments than I can portray in demos. So everyone will, you know, embellish then. But then also both Dan and Wayne, you know, will then add on top of that the orchestration and the synthetic stuff and um, just kind of once again build another layer on top of it. So um, I think it's 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 been really nice because I feel like we have a process that seems to favor our strengths in, in each of our ways. Like I if if I had to if I had to uh, do more arranging and production stuff on my end, I'm sure it, it would Wilderman would not sound like it does. Um, but I'm also able to just focus and contribute my songwriting abilities, which I spend more time on. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good point that like everyone has a strength and we kind of lean into everyone's individual strengths. Um, you know, for, for instance, I, I think that my, the thing that I try and add the most is like, well, how do we, how do we get things to sound different and how do we, um, how do we utilize timbre as a, as a compositional tool? So I spend a lot of time working with Wayne on the orchestrations talking about like, Oh, how do we, how do we, uh, get all these individual instruments working together and complement each other. And then also kind of like from album to album, how do we take the grand scheme big picture of the album and how do we make that unique each time and you know how do we make how do we kind of th throw something new into the mix that doesn't make us just use the same uh techniques over and over again when i listened through the album one thing that really caught me was the fact that you guys were able to pump so much content into an album but avoid making the album sound schizophrenic how did you do that i think it's a variety of things i mean i you know i i think first and foremost it has to well not not to be self-congratulatory but i think it has to at least first have a foundation of a composition that has enough dynamics just in kind of you know I basically will provide a provide a dynamic situation where it's like, okay, this is the heavy section, and then this is the more chill section, and you know, so I'll and and I try to figure out a way to to make things flow, and you know, when you feel like things are getting too tiring from a metal side, then you bring things down more chill, and you kind of you know try to have a lot of tension and release in your composition. Um, so it. it you know, try to start with that framework, which is, you know, a good foundation. But then, as Dan was just saying, you know, Dan and, and Wayne will focus a lot more on timbre and and uh, and and just the the sound, literal sound of the record, as opposed to the songwriting. And uh, and they then will use their abilities to add even more dynamics and kind of change things up with within different sections. So so you're not getting you know, too bored of any given thing if, you know, if it goes on for too long. But um, as far as 
It's kind of hard for me to say how that actually doesn't become schizophrenic because sometimes I actually do get worried that it is. Um, and I'm sure that some, I'm sure some listeners might listen to it and think that, but, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe we have certain th- like themes that come back enough. We have certain like kind of key elements as far as instrumentation or melody writing that, that kind of jump back enough throughout the album that it reminds you that it's all part of a piece, kind of that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, but I, I guess, honestly, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. How we do I mean, crazy. <laughs> I think it's also, you know, subjective or it, it, people. I've definitely read comments where it's like, this band doesn't know what it wants to be. Like, right. Exactly. That's yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, I'm sure a lot of people would argue it is schizophrenic, but that depends on your, on what you like to listen to. I would kind of want to add, I think like, I feel like a lot of the way that we, think about think about in terms of like editing uh editing the song material of of any kind is like a lot of it feels sort of conversational like i i know like speaking in terms of me working on my lead parts a lot of the time like i come from i'm before wilderon i was in a thrash band so like all the leads in that band were like fucking on 10 100 percent of the time and then so now coming to wilderon it's like a lot of the time I notice that we're kind of sitting there thinking like, okay, what are we trying to say right now? So like sometimes it feels like we're trying to say like a really crazy thing with this section, or maybe we're trying to say something that's like a lot more relaxed. And I think the, I think the instruments like in the orchestra and whatnot all just kind of layer on on top of that in terms of like us feeling like we need to hear a certain thing to convey like a thought or a vibe. Yeah, Joe, you, you literally took the words out of my mouth, man. That's exactly what I was going to get at. Is I, I think that we do such a good job as a team talking about every song before we even kind of, you know, start hacking away at it. You know, I know especially Dan and Evan and I, when it comes to orchestra stuff, we definitely, you know, we like listen to the song over Skype together and like make notes of like, oh, this section means this for the song. So in order to pull that mood out of here, what would be the most effective thing to do? And so, I mean, like, you know, of course, it is subjective whether or not it sounds Looney Tunes or not. But I think that probably uh, probably the reason why it maybe holds together is because we focus more on, like, uh, you know, section by section. What What is the intended goal of this part in the story of the song? And then what gets that across most effectively? Is it using big brass chords or is it using strings and like some weird bowed instrument or, you know, and then by way of trying to be the most effective at the, at moment by moment, um, you know, that's what sort of like gives it a foundation to, to live and not feel like it's just jumping all over the place. And not even just moment to moment too, but like within the whole album, you know, we, we are, very conscious of how everything is going to sound throughout the whole album. So sometimes we'll have this idea, be like, oh, this sounds really cool. We'll, we'll throw maybe these synth things on top of this brass t- kind of idea. And and it'll sound good within that section, maybe even sound good within that song. But then you think of it in, within the context of all the songs on the record, you'll be like, but this, this is just this big brash moment that has no other representation on the album does it work and sometimes it doesn't we go back and change it Mm. that's a good point too dan yeah yeah i think that that, and that's the that's the other part of this whole equation is just how many times we go back and revise it and and rethink it and i think that's you know that's one of those parts of the process that you know no one no one besides the five of us really see is just how many how many revisions we do, how many, like, you know, how many notes we take, like, like when you were just saying the orchestration notes, like that's, that's something that no one sees, but you know, we will literally have our hour long, three hour, four hour long conversations or whatever, where we have timestamp notes of like, you know, there's, there's like every 30 seconds, there's a really long note about what we want to happen <laughs> like so it, it's just like a really long arduous process that um 
yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I guess it's just, just, just trying to be diligent. I go, well, that's why we took four years to make this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much guys for taking time to talk to me. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank this you. Thanks for having us. Uh, I hope sometime in the not so distant future, you guys are able to make it up to Penticton and do a show for us. That'd be really cool. Where where is that? It's in British Columbia. Oh okay. Yeah, we got it all here. We got you know if you come here in the summer, we got nice weather. We got lakes everywhere, wineries, dispensaries, distilleries, breweries. We got you covered. It's like yeah, we've been wanting to make it over there. Uh, it's definitely been in our bucket list like area, but we uh yeah, hopefully that'll happen. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, all you guys take care of yourselves, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon, maybe even once you have another hit record. <laughs> for sure, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks Thank a you lot, for man. having us, man. This was cool. Yeah, yeah you bet. All Very right. cool. Take care of all yourselves, right. guys. Eh? All right. Thanks, there. Yeah, take you care. do the same, man. Take care, safe. man. Thanks. Enjoy your night. Yeah, you too. See ya. Right. See ya. Night.